I come to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This gospel story today of Jesus walking on the water is pretty famous. I bet if you asked people, maybe even people outside the church, to name a miracle that Jesus performed, walking on the water is one of the top five. It's definitely more famous than the time that Jesus spit in some mud and then rubbed it on a blind guy. But my point is, this miracle that Jesus performed is incredible and very well known. And I could talk to you about the importance of the faith and the fear and meeting Jesus. But instead, today, I want to talk about the very beginning of this gospel. The walking on the water is important, but what happens leading up to it is important too. So we'll actually go back just a little, even a little further than what we heard today. So what happened before was that Jesus got the news that John the Baptist got beheaded. This was Jesus' cousin, a friend, and someone that he and his disciples looked up to and followed. John baptized Jesus. And it was in that moment of his baptism that he understood his role as God's son. And so when Jesus found out that John had been executed, he wanted some peace and quiet. He wanted to get away from the crowds and pray and rest. And so he tried to get away, but the crowds followed him because they too were distressed about John's death. So Jesus, even though he was looking for solitude and rest, had compassion on them. And then we get the feeding of the 5,000. That was the crowd that was following Jesus, 5,000 men and women and children. And arguably that is almost as famous as the walking on the water. And so Jesus, was ready to rest. And that's where our story picks up today. The first thing we hear is that Jesus sends the disciples away. And then he dismissed the crowd. Everyone left. Have any of you ever thrown a dinner party? And by the end of the party, it's easy to think, I love all of you, and please leave. And Jesus sent the disciples away in a boat, because I think Jesus was feeling like that. I need that rest that I was looking for. And then Jesus is alone for a whole night, and he prays, I imagine he sleeps, And he finally gets that rest. And then once he is rested, he is ready to rejoin his disciples. And that is when he has the strength and power to walk across the water to a boat in the middle of a turbulent sea. And Jesus resting after a meal actually mirrors some Jewish practices. So one thing that intrigues me is that the Jewish concept of a day starts at sunset. The day goes from sunset to sundown the next day. You see it in creation when God created the world in seven days. Each day was counted with evening and then morning. And even on the day that God rested, there was evening and then there was morning. And so this Jewish conception of a day is very different than how we think of a day now. Often a day is technically defined as 24 hours from 12 midnight until 11.59 p.m. 
But I often think of a day as the time I'm awake, from the time I get up in the morning until the time I go to sleep at night. The time I am asleep or resting or unproductive doesn't really count in my day. But the idea that a day starts in the evening is very different. Because the day starts with your evening meal and then rest. The rest that everyone needs and most people hopefully get overnight is actually the beginning of the day. It's not something that is earned at the end of a long day. It's not something that is separate from the day. And it's definitely not a reward. This period of rest is how the day actually starts. And rest is something that we are entitled to because we are created in the image of God, a God that rested. And rest is how we prepare ourselves to do God's work. Everyone deserves rest. Jesus, who was God and human at the same time, he needed rest. He needed to be alone and to pray. And that prayer connected him with God and himself. And so I will share with you that rest is actually something I really struggle with. If you're curious, you can ask my husband. He's not here today, but he does tell me all the time that I do not know how to rest. I get caught up in the idea that rest is something I deserve after I finish the work that I have to do. Or I can't take a break because there's too much work to do. And if I don't do it, then it won't get done. And this is not the message that Jesus preached or the message that Jesus lived. Jesus demonstrated with his life that rest and time set aside for prayer is just as important as the miracles, like walking on water or feeding the 5,000. Jesus did not tell his disciples that they could rest once they had finished spreading his message across the entire world. He demonstrated with his actions that rest is a part of the work of following Jesus. And if you're like me, and I think some of you might be, you're kind of addicted to the thrill of getting something done or getting praise for working harder and being the best and proving it by hard work. And when I take time to relax and rest, I can even feel like I'm doing something wrong like I'm letting people down who depend on me, like I'm not being productive with my to-do list, which is longer than my grocery list, and I don't know how to pause. And this is a problem, and it's actually a sin, because God gave us commandments to rest. It's one of the first ones, even before do not kill and do not commit adultery. God demonstrated rest in creation, and Jesus demonstrated his need for rest and solitude and prayer repeatedly throughout the Gospels. Today's story is just one example. So if Jesus found time to rest between feeding the 5,000 and walking on water, I think I can find time to rest between writing my sermon and attending a vestry meeting. And more importantly, when we rest, we have the opportunity to remember whose we are. We are reminded that we are not here to serve our bosses or our bottom lines. We are here to serve God and do God's will on earth. Jesus' rest that he took before walking on water gave him the strength that he needed to continue to follow God's mission. If Jesus needed to take time away and rest and prayer to be able to follow God here on earth, who am I to argue with that? Rest is not a reward for a job well done. Rest is the beginning. It is what we are entitled to as people who are created in God's image and people who model our lives on Jesus' life. Rest is not optional. Find ways to rest that allow your soul to be refreshed and connect with Jesus. 
And if you're anything like me, you have to put it in your calendar and then force yourself to do it. And I still fail often, and I'm still learning how to rest, how to sit still and be in the presence of God so that I can be reminded that no matter how much or how little I get done, God loves me and God is still in charge. It is through rest that we remember we are God's beloved. So go and rest. Beloved of God, that is what Jesus did before he walked on the water. Amen.